Psalm chapter 23, Psalm chapter 23, we're talking about the names of God, and I was with the Holy Spirit the other day. How many of you know the Holy Spirit's awesome to talk to? And uh, I, I, I was getting ready to start a new series, and he said, no, I want you to keep doing the names of God. I want everybody to know how great I am. How many of you know the God that we serve is a great and an awesome and a mighty God? Can you say amen? He's a great God. Turn to somebody next to you and say, he's a great God. He's a great God. As you're turning to Psalm 23, we're talking about the different names of God that are found in the scriptures. And we need to understand that even though there are different names of God that relate to this God, there is still only one God. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, is one God. There are not a lot of gods. There is one God in Christianity. But this one God can manifest himself as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So as we go through the names of God, don't think that there are all these different gods. There is only one God. Turn to somebody and say, there's only one God. There's only one God, but he reveals himself in a lot of different ways. Last week, we talked about Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our God who heals. How many of you are glad that he is a healer? He can heal marriages. He can he can heal finances. He can heal bodies. He can heal mental conditions. He can heal anyone. This morning, we're going to talk about Jehovah Rohi. Everybody say that with me. Jehovah Rohi. One more time, please. Jehovah Rohi. It is found in Psalm chapter 23, starting in verse 1. It goes like this. Pastor Tony is my shepherd. I... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the NIV version. Let me try something else. Here we go. All right. I got a good one. New American Standard. Pastor Strayer is my shepherd. No. Okay, another version. Let me try here the uh, new Strayer version. Here we go. Joyce Myers is my shepherd. I shall. No, no, no. Okay, who is my shepherd? What does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. The word Lord there in the Hebrew means Jehovah. Jehovah is the most used name found of God in the Bible. It is used approximately 6,800 times. What a study that would be. So it's the most often used name of God in the Bible. So he starts off and he says, Jehovah is my shepherd. And when he's talking about Jehovah, you're referring to two things. Number one, you're referring to the fact that Jehovah is the eternal one. What does that mean? He has always been and he has always existed. God was never created. God never came unto the uh, existence here on planet earth after a period of time. How many of you know before everything was, the Lord was present and the Lord was there? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So when you talk about Jehovah, you're talking about the God who has always existed, who has always been. Psalm 90 and verse 2 says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And since Jehovah has always been, is, and always will be, then guess what he is? He is the God of the past, he is the God of the present, and he is the God of the future. But how many of you are glad that he is a God of the past. What does that mean? That God has forgiven every one of your sins that you have ever committed from this point all the way till you were born. He is a forgiver. He is a forgiver. And I look back in the past, and I see all the things he's done for us. He has saved us. He's healed us. He's helped us. He's delivered us. He's changed us. Do you remember all those things he did in the past? He's protected us. He's provided for us. He's strengthened us. He's comforted us. He's forgiven us. He has also prospered us. And I got great news for you this morning. Whatever he has done once, he will do it again. He can do it again. Turn to somebody and say, he can do it again. He can do it again. He can do it again. He is after us. He wants us to come back to him and know him, not only be saved, but to be on fire for Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, get on fire for Jesus. Get on fire for Jesus. Get on fire for Jesus. He's not only a God of the past, but how many of you are glad that he is a God of the present? Does anybody need the Lord to do anything right now in your life, in your business, in your situation? How many of you are glad he is a God of the now? Oh, I'm so thankful for the Lord. What is that word over there? Now. That is the theme of our church this year. We are 2020 now, believing in the supernatural God that he can do something right now in our life. He will do great things now. He exists now. He is real now. He is alive now. He is here now. He heals now. He loves now. I might make a song out of this. He performs miracles now. He can be known now. He is a now God. Aren't you glad that he can change your life now? Aren't you glad that he can change your direction now? Aren't you glad that he can give you a job now? I just might do this for the rest of the time. He can deliver you now. He can do great things now. And he is also a God of the future. How many of you are glad that your future is very bright in the Lord? Only 10 hands are up. This is really bad. No, really, how many of you are glad your future is bright in the Lord? Your future is not bright in your own strength and power. Mm -mm. Number two, the name Jehovah is talking about him being a personal shepherd and God. 
He is Jehovah Rohi. He is our close companion. He is our best friend. The word Rohi, if you notice in Psalm 23 and verse 1, Jehovah is my Rohi. Shepherd is Rohi. The Lord is my Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Anytime you use the word Jehovah, it's talking about the God that we serve as a personal God. He's our close companion. He is our best friend. He cares for us. He helps us, and he tends to our needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I am saved. Bill Strayer is saved. You never have to doubt that you're saved because look what it says here. The Lord is my shepherd, is, present tense in the Hebrew. Everybody say this, please. The Lord is my shepherd. He is. I am saved and born again. Now, in the Bible, let's turn to John chapter 10. In your Bible, make sure you bring your Bibles to the house. So in the New Testament, Jesus is called shepherd three times. Everybody say three times. Why three times? Well, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's start reading in John chapter 10 and verse 7, please. John chapter 10 and verse 7. First of all, he is called the Good Shepherd. How many of you are glad that Jesus is good all the time? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Verse 7, John 10. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Buddha is the door of the sheep. Where did that come from? Muhammad is the door of the sheep. I am. I am the door of the sheep. Look at this verse now. This isn't politically correct. Should we not say it if it's not politically correct? All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Wow. What was he saying? Anybody else who says they're the Messiah, anybody else who says they're the door, anybody else who says they're the good shepherd, they are thieves and robbers. But listen what? The sheep did not hear them. But I am the door. Don't cry. It's okay. He is the door. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to kill and steal and destroy. But how many of you are glad that Jesus Christ has come to give life and life more abundantly? Verse 13, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, who he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling, and does not care about the sheep, but I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. How many of you are glad this morning that he is the good shepherd, regardless of what you're going through? Because nothing bad comes from the good shepherd. The only thing that comes from the good shepherd are things that are good. And how many of you are glad that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose? Now, if you'll notice here, if you'll notice in verse 11 and 14, the, John is trying to get across a point. The reason he calls him the good shepherd is because he's saying this, he is God. Do you notice the terms he uses? I am the good shepherd. He is Jehovah Rohi. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13, please. Hebrews chapter 13. He is also called the great shepherd. Everybody say great shepherd. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, aren't you glad Jesus is alive? That great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The reason he's called the great shepherd is simply because of the great things that he has done for us, and he is the only shepherd and the only way to heaven. I was sharing this in one service, and a man came up to me and says, Pastor Strayer, you can't say that. I looked him in the eyes and say, then match what Jesus did. What do you mean I can't say he's the only way to heaven? What do you mean I can't say that he has done great things for everybody? What do you mean I can't say that he is the only shepherd, the one and true only shepherd by which you can go to the Father? You can't say that. Yes, I can, because guess what? If there was another Savior or another God that can match what Jesus did, then he can be the great shepherd and take the place of Jesus, and we will all worship that individual. But guess what? No one can match what the great shepherd has done. What has the great shepherd done? He is the only one born of a virgin. He is the only one who has never sinned one time. He is the only one who went to hell and took and kept the death and took the keys of death and hell away from Satan. He is the only one who rose from the dead. He is the only one who can forgive our sins. He is the only one who ascended to heaven. He is the only one who created the universe. He is the only one who can heal. He is the only one who can save us. Are you ready? Match that. You can't match that. 
That's why he is Jehovah Rohi, the great shepherd. And one more, 1 Peter chapter 5. Can I give you one more? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. I only need one yes, so I got that. Here we go. 1 Peter 5, 4, he is called the chief shepherd. Did you get these? He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. Now he's the chief shepherd. Three times he's labeled shepherd in the New Testament. And David labels him the shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd in Psalm 23. And when the chief shepherd appears, everything has been fulfilled that needs to be fulfilled for Jesus to come back. The chief shepherd. And when the chief shepherd appears, it's positive in the Greek. And when he appears, we are going to receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. You say, Pastor, why when the Lord comes back, why is he going to give us a crown? For the work that we have done for him on earth. God's people, can I challenge you in the Lord in love? Get busy for the king. Nothing else in this time that we are living in really, 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 really matters. Yes, family matters. Yes, job matters. Yes, children matters. I get all that. I have two children. I have grandchildren. I spend time with them. But there is nothing more important than eternal things. Can I look you in the eye and say this? We do not have much time left. Today is the day to be about our father's business. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 6, please. Revelation chapter 6, please. In your Bibles, in my Bible, from Revelation Revelation chapter 4 through the end of that book, it is all future. So if you want to know what the future is, you do not have to go see Madam Lola and get your fortune told. Let me say this again so you don't understand. I want everybody to start to read the book of Revelation in your devotions. From Revelation 4 to the end of the chapter, it is all future. So what is happening in Revelation 6 that I am reading has not happened yet. It is going to happen, though. That's why I don't get caught up in Facebook and don't get caught up in the news and don't get caught up in the media. I know what's going on, but I don't get caught up because they don't have the slightest ding-dong what in the world is going on. How many of you know we as born-again believers already know what is going on because it is written in his book by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? So here in Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 5, these are the seal judgments that the Lord pours out on planet Earth in the future, not now, in the future. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature. Living creatures in Revelation are just different types of angels. Come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Pastor Strayer, what does that mean? In the future, there is coming such great inflation that all of us will work for one day's pay, and that whole one day's pay will only pay for one meal for our family. What went up is going to come down. There is going to be the crash of a lifetime. But how many of you are glad that our faith is in Jesus Christ? Come on, it's going to happen. How many of you know the Lord's word is true, but how many of you are glad he's going to take care of us? And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with a sword, and to kill with hunger, and to kill with pestilence, and to kill with disease, and to kill with death. No man can stop it. A new strain of flu, the coronavirus, that can change and mutate into another new virus. It is happening now in China. Thousands are dying, and it is found in over 20 countries now. Man can't stop these outbreaks, and more things like this are coming to planet Earth. It is a sign Jesus is returning soon. Pastor, I'm shaking. I feel so bad. Why are you feeling bad? You're one of the king's kids. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. One of these days, the archangel's going to shout, and we are going to be out of here. Foop. Is anybody ready? Only one person's ready. We got two people ready right there. Anybody else ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we got eight going in the rapture. We'll take it. Turn to somebody and say, get right or get left. Get right or get left. You know, the Lord just spoke to me, and it's a general thing right now. Turn with me back to Psalm 23, please. The Lord just said there's a few people here that aren't right with the Lord. You need to get right with the Lord today. You need to get right with the Lord. I go to church. No, you need to get right with the Lord today. I'm a good person. No, no, no. We're only good sinners. We need Jesus. You need to get right with the Lord. Turn to somebody and say, you need to get right with the Lord today. 
We'll finish up here. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is not shepherd, I shall not want. Do you notice that King David leaves this sentence incomplete? Isn't that amazing? What was David saying here? Since the Lord is my personal shepherd, how many of you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Isn't it true that as we get closer and closer to the Lord, we want less and less and less of the world? And less and less and less of the things of the world? So David writes this and he says, since Jehovah Rohi is my personal shepherd and I spend time with him every day, I shall not want more money. I shall not want more fame. I shall not want more things. I shall not want more stuff. I shall not want anything. What I want is this. I want Jesus. I want Jesus more than anything else in the world. I am hungry for Jesus. I'm hungry for his word. I'm hungry for his goodness. I'm hungry for his love. Do we have any hungry people? That's not enough hungry people. Come on, do we have any hungry people? I shall not want all the things the world can offer. I shall want Jesus. I shall want Jesus. I don't want stuff. We see stuff. We buy stuff. We display stuff. We insure stuff. We compare it with other people's stuff. We buy a house to put our stuff in. And as we acquire more stuff, we need a bigger house. One man said that a house is just a pile of stuff with a cover on it. Then we run out of room and we start to store stuff. But we need to understand a couple things about stuff. Number one is this. Stuff will never satisfy us and never make us happy. Psalm 144 verse 15 says this. Happy are the people whose God is their Lord. And number two, let's turn with me if you would please to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and I'll end with this. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and I'll end with this and we'll let you go. 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 to 11. The second thing about stuff is this. Stuff can never be taken with you. Stuff can never be taken with you. 1 Timothy 6, starting in verse 6. Take out a pen or a pencil or a marker, if you would, if you got a hard copy of your Bible. Underline verse 6. I have it memorized, but it's, just, it's always in my heart. I was telling Susie about it last night. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Not more stuff. Not more stuff. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through, look at this, with many sorrows. Stuff cannot be taken with you, and I don't know about you, but listen, I have never seen a U-Haul following a hearse. I'm a marketing major from Purdue University, and God created in all of us desire. Did you know that? So as we become born-again believers, what do we do? We desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. We desire the Lord. But before we are born-again believers, I know what marketing can do. It can make you buy stuff, and when you get that home, you say, why in the world did I buy that stuff? The marketing world and the enemy appeals to the desire that God placed within us. And as we walk in the world, we want more stuff, and there's a craving for more, and there's a craving for more, and there's a craving for more. Then you get born again. Then you get to know that he is your shepherd. Then you know that he's Jehovah Rohi, the personal God. And as you throw yourself down on the altar every day, you get up after, after the altar, and after a few years you say, oh, my goodness, I don't need all of this stuff anymore. What I need for happiness, what I need for my purpose in life, what I need for the real meaning of life is not more stuff. It doesn't make me happy. What I need is Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my God. I don't want stuff. I want Jesus and all of the godly stuff that he can give me and all of second service said. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Can we do that? Jehovah Rohi.